In this video, we are going to drink a Honey Orchid Danzon Oolong from 1961 and we will tell you which, in our opinion, is one of the best tea shops in the US to buy Danzon Oolong tea. Hi guys, this is Gabriele from Nanoshan, where we share the pleasure of drinking and discovering genuine farm tea. Today, once again, I'm with Carolyn. Hi guys! If you also, like us, are looking forward to expand your tea knowledge and brewing skills, make sure to click on the subscribe button and don't forget to give us a thumbs up if at any point of time you enjoy watching. Today is quite of a special occasion actually, because we are going to drink a 59 years old Danson Oolong tea and we have to thank actually Elsa for uh, this tea because she introduced us to the shop where we bought this tea. You guys know Elsa because uh, I've done last summer a video with her which is the one with most view in our channel so if you haven't watched that video about white tea you want to go ahead and click on the link that is now on the screen and uh, have a look at that. If there are so many views maybe there is a reason for it. Anyway, thanks a lot Elsa for introducing us to uh, Chi Fine Teas, is the name of the shop. It is a shop that is in Oregon, in Portland. Karen, you've been twice in Portland. You always look for tea and you didn't find it. The thing is that usually I'm there only for a day. Um, and I remember last time I somehow probably saw some tea, some interesting tea shops, but I didn't have the time just to go there. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, luckily enough, uh, uh, Elsa's mom discovered this place when she was traveling in Portland. <laughs> and, uh, and so we placed an order. Actually, uh, it's all my tea. Yeah, I bought for this tea. I bought for this. I paid for this tea. So, <laughs> you haven't paid yet. <laughs> I haven't paid yet because she, she anticipated the money. That's right. So it was actually the order of me, myself, and also of Severin that we greet. Hi, Severin, a friend of us this is in Switzerland. Severin ordered uh, this tea here. The tea is a Milan Sian, so they call it with the uh, English translation, Honey Orchid, from 1993. And then we have ordered some more teas that we will tell you a little bit more um, about later. But let's speak about this tea here. Here we have uh, 9 grams of uh, the most expensive tea I ever bought. It is, uh, they sell it in uh, 3 grams pouches for $25. So here there is $75 worth of tea. It's not all mine, portion of it goes to Switzerland to Severin and the rest we are going to enjoy today. So uh, I will start waiting it and then uh, we can tell you a little bit more about the, the history, about the shop. Um, I will brew, this time we don't do Danson style. Honestly, I don't know if a very aged uh, uh, so that's some style I meant Chao Zhou style uh, brewing. I don't know if a very aged uh, um, Danso is really suitable for that type of steeping. And moreover, when you do Chao Zhou style, you tend to spill all around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I really don't want to waste uh, um, too much of this tea. So let's see. I'll take 4.5 uh, grams. So and the tea looks already different from dan songs you would buy like uh, from from yeah, recent years. It. Uh, it looks really uh, like as if there were also a bit of stems in there. Yeah, there yeah. are quite some stems, uh, and I'm taking also all those stems because I want also to leave a good uh, a good mixed batch for uh, Severin so that we have both a little bit of everything. You also see some, um, I took some high resolution picture that you see now on the, on the camera, and you see that some leaves are, are together, like are some mold maybe, or some dust, uh, you see there, is a little bit uh, uh, unclear what is that exactly. And some leaves are also very light in color uh, compared to the, the rest, so it seems to be a, a funny mix. Uh. So I don't know how they processed tea exactly back then, but uh, it's going to be Yeah, to be yeah. They, they say it was baked only once, uh, which uh, they say for both the 93 and the 60 ones. So um, it could be that that time they were used to baking the tea only once. And uh, guys, this tea is uh, 
was made uh, well before the man landed on the moon. So we are really speaking of uh, a quite old tea and of course I'm waiting it for so long that uh, <laughs> my scale went off. But I can do like that. And uh, so this uh, shop, um, Chi Fine Teas, they are actually now in Oregon, but they spend quite a lot, it's a couple, and there are also other people involved uh, from the family. I'm not sure if also outside of the family. They have been traveling in China for very long. And um, here we go. So the other half will be for savoring. And uh, um, they spent, I think, more than a decade traveling in China. They uh, even have, I think, nowadays, her family have uh, also um, a tea shop, actually, in China. And they are specialized, I would say, in Danzong tea. Uh, they have also some uh, tea from Yunnan, and I think from Guizhou, uh, another province in southern China. It's not a huge shop. I don't know if any of you have heard that uh, the name before. I wasn't aware of this shop but uh, we were very very surprised with the quality of their dance song yeah i really enjoyed well yeah go ahead go yeah, ahead i really enjoyed this honeysuckle fragrance uh dance song um yeah it 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 it, it was really nice and it's it's it wasn't even that expensive no so no it because it's a winter harvest and they sell uh, the winter harvest for half the price and twelve dollar fifty for how much 50 grams? I'm not uh, sure. It's not, no, 25 grams. Seems to be more 25 grams. 25, so it's yeah. not super cheap. Uh, $12.50 for uh, 25 grams. But it was uh, harvested on the last day of the winter harvest of last year uh, when the leaves are growing a little bit slower because the, the tree is almost hibernating for winter. And um, it, uh, by the way, I mean, uh, um, this is honeysuckle, they give always the English name. This is actually uh, in Huaxian, uh, that means uh, honeysuckle fragrance in Chinese, and is nothing else than Yashixiang. It is uh, duck shit, it's the same uh, cultivar. And um, So if you like very floral dance songs, then this is, uh, this is the dance song for you. Yeah, it is uh, extremely floral, so maybe it lacks a little bit of body, or if you want, the, the, the florality overcomes that. But to my experience, that also something common with, uh, uh, let me take this out for, um, is also something common, we will give a rinse. Uh, I forgot that we can use a glass, oh, as a, it's okay, I use the glass. And um, so inside here we have uh, about $40 of tea. It's incredible actually, I'm steeping this tea Oh, wow. the color is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. So, uh, you know, when you buy such an old tea, um, it's also a question, is it, is it real or is it fake? Right, because, uh, you know, how can they be sure it was, uh, uh, it was from that, uh, you want to, yeah, go I ahead. I just smell. Don't waste, uh, yeah, five dollars flew around. Ooh. Okay, so should I say something? Or yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So from my perspective, it's probably closer to uh, sure. shoe popcorn <laughs> than a dance song at this stage, like yes. the way it smells. Well, 60 years old. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting. Yeah, uh, let's see what if we can taste anything else. And so I was saying about the um, if it is real, it is really so old. Well you can tell that it's very old this tea and you can definitely tell that it's not uh, fermented artificially. You still have some yellow leaves, so it's not completely um, dark. And um, as uh, more common in, uh, in fermented teas, artificially fermented. And also they have a story to tell you, like uh, um, the, the owners, I think they are called James and Ivy. They have spent a lot of years in China they have also relatives there. Uh, they uh, have been to the um, to the cultivation area. They have been several times in Fengquan. They know all the story of the tea. So basically, also from uh, uh, one of the two teas, I think the the Gardenia fragrance, which is uh, Huan Zixian, 
that we also had, we can tell you later about that. Uh, they um, make this tea with a 300 years old tree because they know the uh, grandpa basically that uh, owns the tea. So it's um, uh, it, all the story that there is behind. Uh, um, I think it's quite hot because it's quite full, 97, okay. yeah. it's okay. So we do a very quick re uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, let's do the first quick and let's see what we get in the first. I want to use this uh, strainer because it is uh, quite dusty, so we had a clear... But look, look yeah, the color, the color is, is really dark. It's dark, but look, it doesn't re remind you, look inside, coffee. You know, the um, Schupuer is more reddish in a way. This has this the is brown dark. is darker. Yeah. Brown, brown, brown red. Brown yeah. red, yeah. it has, it has some, it reminds me a filter coffee actually, from the color. A very light coffee, mm. yeah. Here you go. Mm. I'm really, really curious. Go ahead. If you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it doesn't smell like shoe. It has, of course, a clear note from cellar. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. It's, it's, a, yeah. it's like an old wine that you get out of the cellar and the kind of freshness in the fragrance that is not the freshness of the tea, which is not fresh, but the kind of fresh smell that you have when you enter a cellar, a cool cellar. Exactly, yes. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. So it's already, it's a bit like a, yeah, hey cha, so. Yeah, I could never say it is a, a dance song. It's not astringent. Somehow it is really like a shoe, but it doesn't, uh, um, I don't know why earthy is not the first word that came up to my mind somehow. It's more the cellar than the earth, yeah. so it's more like he maybe Hecha than 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 Shupuer. Um. And um, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, really it's interesting. <laughs> you know, it's something you know that the tea at this stage, after so many years of aging, as uh, has already passed its peak, right? It's, uh, you know, all the aromas that you have uh, in Danzong, you cannot have uh, in this one here. But uh, nonetheless, it's an experience. It's really an experience to see how does uh, a Danzong actually develop over the years, yeah? Um, with respect to a, to a Shenkwer, for example. And uh, the history so I've never tried Sheng Puers from 1961, so no, <laughs> it's no. difficult to compare. I think the oldest, uh, well, uh, no, I, I did, but uh, I, I'm less sure about the um, uh, the origin, you know, if it really was a, a real one. But then some of them I'm pretty sure because we did the sound laboratory test with the university in uh, Zurich in Switzerland to analyze all the Sheng Puer, and we activated some contacts in China to collect uh, um, small samples of very old shampooer and we compared uh, uh, by laboratory test uh, old shampooer with shoopware to see if by laboratory test you can tell them apart and uh, we didn't pay for the samples you know we're just uh, uh, owner of that tea that wanted to share it so uh, hopefully some of those were really old actually and we noticed a little bit the difference in the value between shoe and, sh and old shank so some of those might have been uh, really old. And look at this. They write uh, handwritten letters when you make an order. Like we, we write uh, uh, letters to every customer that makes an order at Nanoshan, but I mean on the computer, uh, on the keyboard, and uh, it costs to us several hours every week just of writing letters and uh, they even take the time to write that by hand which shows actually that the shop is really small 
and uh, they also point it out on the website that they say uh, we really look only at the top quality tea we are uh, we have a small choice if you want and we don't care about the price <laughs> just the quality so that's why they're so expensive <laughs> So the only thing I can smell on the lid is a bit of rhubarb. Oh yes! Yeah. Oh yes! Yes, yeah, for sure. So that's 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 the. No, doubt that you say still, that. You, yeah, this is the the only so thing clear. apart from the kind of cellar notes. Oh. But it's not like you would expect like some Celery. some old teas to get to get very um, wow. to get very Chinese mediciny. But this is like. Yeah. Not 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 that much. No, so no. you don't have these camphor notes or these things. No, it's, it's, it's yeah. actually clean. It's yeah. a very clean tea. Very smooth. Very smooth. smooth yeah. Very clean. And now that you say rhubarb, rhubarb is the right word in English. Rhubarb. Or rhubarb. I don't know. Rhubarb, rhubarb yeah. in <laughs> German. <laughs> I even don't know the Italian word. I'm not sure. But uh, uh, we will put the picture here so that you know what we are talking about. And also, I taste some uh, celery root in it. Yeah, 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 you're right. So in a way we can tell that maybe all those floral fragrances switched to some uh, more vegetable notes. So it's more like in the smell and then maybe a in bit the, of yeah. celery taste, like rhubarb smell, celery taste, but um, I wouldn't say rhubarb taste at all. No, but the, the smell no fact, uh, at you all, know, so. uh, it, it reminds me the rhubarb uh, kuchen. Uh, this one here. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, rhubarb cake. <laughs> rhubarb cake. It's. Uh, mm, that's a good. It's very liquorish in a way. It's, it's a nice experience indeed. Yeah. It's just you know it's a tea that, uh, even though I can imagine having this tea after dinner, <laughs> it's not uh, you know I cannot spend forty dollars every dinner just to <laughs> just to try the tea. So uh, we won't be able to tell you as well if it helps digestion. <laughs> yes, we <laughs> won't. Yeah. But uh, we uh, Severin or order also eight gram of the nineteen ninety three from the same farmer. So I think we will give this tea to Severin when we meet him in person and we will actually uh, drink it drink it with him because I'm really curious to see an intermediate stage uh, that's about uh, uh, 30 years old so and so the history of this tea we say this tea is from 1961 and uh, what happened is that uh, the um, the grandma that uh, at that time uh, was doing uh, did this tea was not able to sell all her tea for that year which is kind of reasonable because uh, uh, it was in the middle of uh, the great leap forward so it was in those four years where there was a lot of famine in china people had nothing to eat uh, and millions of people died unfortunately so actually we should dedicate these uh, tea tasting to all those uh, person that uh, lost their life we're drinking instead of them <laughs> We're drinking yeah. instead of them at the end. You know, we are having this tea because in those years, uh, Chinese have uh, other things to do than buy tea. So um, it makes sense actually. And uh, the next year, in 1962, the um, Great Leap Forward was over. So China started uh, recovering. Um, and uh, and maybe because of that, they also uh, were able to buy the tea again. In fact, in 1962, they sold out all the tea. And no one was interested anymore in the 61, because now there is this uh, worldwide trend of aged teas. Danzong is a fresh tea, traditionally. People from Chaozhou go to Fuenghuan in spring just to buy the fresh Mao Cha. So they are not interested in an aged tea. So this grandma put all the remainings of the 61 in a jar and, um, and it left it basically there until uh, Ivy and James discovered it and um, offered it on their uh, website now. So all the story makes sense to me, also in particular the era where it is uh, uh, and the situation in China at that time. And 
Um, we told you a little bit of different names today. We have the Inhua Xiang, Huan Xiang, Milan Xiang. And in fact, for me, it was even a bit harder to understand which these are in the we did order actually because they all always put the just the English name, which is fine, is better of course for uh, English speaking people, but I'm used more to the Chinese name. And uh, by the way, if you're also interested in, th in that, I made a whole video about the word Xiang, which means fragrance and uh, uh, related to it uh, all the different cultivar of the dan song so i will put the link uh, on the video right now and also in the description below go ahead and have a look at that video if you want to know a little bit more about uh, the chinese terminology of dan song i have to concentrate a bit on the taste now it probably tastes like the jar where it was sitting yeah Or maybe the jar now tastes like. Look. So the leaves are already pretty broken. Yeah, they are broken. But look at this. Is uh, is still yellow green. So, you know, this is barely. Maybe it was a Huampian, Who knows? But uh, it is. Uh, I mean, just the leaves. I mean, these particular leaves. That maybe at that time it could be that they didn't sort it out uh, the tea. Uh, could well be actually that uh, now they sort out the tea so when you have Mao Cha then you sort out the Quan Pian. We did a video about Mao Cha as well so you have a link now on the screen if you want to look at that and uh, some of the leaves really didn't change much in color or they lost the color they lost the green pigment but uh, they didn't took uh, any fermentation basically while if the tea would have been fermented these would not look uh, like this. I will try to, to show it closer to to the camera. It's always difficult, but uh, oh, it's quite hard, yeah. You see here? And um, I want to do a little bit a longer steep to get, I don't know, maybe just with less water, a bit more licorice. Uh, taste in it. It's definitely a pleasant tea for me, like, you know, sometimes you can ruin a tea putting it 60 year in a jar, maybe. It's, uh, it, Dan Song is not famous for being uh, suitable for aging, so you don't know how it turns, but um, I enjoy it very, very much. And just the fact that it is one of a kind, yeah. So then we had uh, we tried also their uh, uh, Guanjishan, the Gardenia fragrance, uh, which is uh, uh, my favorite tea. Uh, I always say Guanjishan um, is the tea that I would bring on an island if I have to spend there the rest of my life. And uh, Caroline knows that uh, tea very well as well. In fact, yesterday actually I was brewing. <laughs> I didn't tell her what I'm going to brew. I started brewing Huan Zixian without showing her the leaves and just by the smell in the hair, she was so proud. <laughs> I smelled it from one meter distance. Yeah, yeah, so, so just to recover from that blind tasting that we had. By the way, the blind tasting that we did, uh, uh, that you did, we had a tea from another company, Verdant Tea, and today we are drinking a tea from uh, um, Chi Fine Tea. So, in a way, I mean, we are also shop Nano Shan, maybe we shouldn't really, you know, drink tea of other, uh, of our uh, competitors. But on the other side, uh, the, I believe the world of tea, of high quality tea, is very small. And if you find the pearl, a shop that you like, uh, you should point that out. And uh, um, me, I wouldn't buy only from one shop. Caroline neither. She orders also from many different other shops, not only from Nano Shan. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, I, I'm sure that it makes sense for everybody to try a little bit of everything. So if you are in the US, I don't know if they ship to Europe, might be also very expensive now, but if you are in the US, give them a chance, try their dance song. And Caroline, how would you compare their Huan Zixian, the Gardenia fragrance tea, with Nano Shans? So both are very high quality, so I would say both are quite similar actually. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Oh, I forgot it. Yeah. And uh, I, I, what I remember of that tasting is that um, 
uh, there is a difference between the two teas. The tea that they uh, they are uh, Huan Jixian, which costs twenty five dollars for twenty five grams, I think. So it's one dollar per gram. Is from a three hundred years old tree. An hour is uh, a first generation from a tree that is uh, uh, reputed to be about 500 years old. In fact, if you I looked at both sides of both trees, their tree and our tree, an hour is fairly larger since it is the same cultivar. Makes sense that is also older. And uh, but I said our is just first generation, and I have the feeling that uh, their tea has uh, uh, more body in a way and it lacks a little bit of uh, the very high notes aromatic notes so it's like uh, maybe it's just my association but it's like uh, a old trees give a little bit more substance more body so for what the body concern uh, I like better their tea and for what the typical aromatics of uh, uh, Huan Jixian the flora, floral aromatics, uh, I would rather go from ours. Yeah, maybe we should try a mix. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Sometimes you have interesting things, uh, you know. Um, I know other shops that also tried, uh, for example, with Ye Guanyin, taking three different batches, same garden from different days, and finding some differences between the three, and then simply say, okay, let's try to put everything together and see what comes out. At the end, is the same garden. Sometimes farmers do that themselves, and they prefer the um, the blend. It's constant to me. I don't know. I feel like there's some minerality. Uh, but that comes, uh, yeah. Yeah. I see. I see what you mean. Um, um, yes. That wasn't there at the beginning. At the but beginning, it was bitterness. very smooth, and like I, I feel, I still feel something in the mouth, still yeah. in the throat. Uh, but I st I steep the tea a little bit longer. But even the previous uh, steep, uh. it's it's like it is smooth, but you feel uh, um, a tiny bit of bitterness. You feel um, tiny bit is 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 not that, that uh, is pleasant to me. It's you know a kind of uh, uh, add on on top of the of the cellar taste and the vegetable taste that we spoke about. Yeah, but now it's, it's definitely more uh, concentrated. Really, really interesting, yeah. I want to do um, another steep and I think this tea we will, uh, we will keep it. And you know what we tried this time? Uh, I will put tonight this uh, guy one in the fridge. You want to do cold brew, it's true. <laughs> it, looks like, it already looks like coffee, so we looks might like as well we can do, do a cold, cold brew. brew. <laughs> No, just because I want to drink it tomorrow. I think that in this 4.5 gram, I have a lot of power to release. And uh, yeah, let's see how it um, comes out. Yeah. And if you like uh, this type of reviews, you know, that we you like that we share with you uh, teas that we try from other shop, uh, uh, please let us know in the description below. It's honestly, it's not clear to us uh, if uh, you enjoy Namoshan shop speaking of uh, teas from others honestly if I try a tea from another shop that I don't like I won't tell it right we don't want to speak bad about our competitors but if we find a shop that uh, you know produce high quality tea I think uh, we know how much effort there is behind sourcing and I like actually sharing uh, the information yeah and also physical shops right that are not really our direct competitors if you think about uh, poor brooklyn that uh, we visited in new york uh, there is also a video about uh, that uh, it was like a nice experience there um, a nice uh, atmosphere actually it's a great place because they also have a sort of room downstairs and at the time we were there so it was last year in july they also had this exhibit of a uh, um, with with clothing. Um. Yeah, because he's uh, uh, the the owner Grippo is also a um, how do you say um, mode designer. Yeah, designer. fashion designer, fashion, fashion designer. So they combine tea and fashion in a very nice uh, in a very nice way actually. So when you are in this room, you are surrounded by their their collection or collection of other artists' clothes collection in the walls. 
Um, yeah, so if you end up being in New York, uh, I would definitely um, pay a visit to poor Brooklyn. And I said, there is a, a room for drinking tea there, so it's not only a shop. Yeah, the color is a bit lighter, but okay, we yeah. steeped also we steep it not as light, long. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting. It yeah, it's like whiskey now. I have the feeling, you know, at this stage, Shupur would still be very dark. Four steepings, it would still be very, very dark, you know. Sometimes you throw away the first three. Mm. So, um, and this is 60 years old. Now it's a like very different, uh, it's, it's the same color, but it's a different intensity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's interesting because like if you give me this tea and you would ask me what is that just by looking at it It would be damn difficult I probably would guess a black tea Maybe since it has a tiny bit of uh, Well, it's quite clear though. Yeah, probably I would say a black tea. What would you say? Probably or it would need to be a very dark roasted oolong and even then I'm not sure yeah, yeah. because it doesn't have a, I don't know it doesn't to me it doesn't seems like roasting that in fact I mean it was also baked only once anyway if you got inspired by this tea go ahead and try the teas from uh, uh, Chi Fine Tea let's say they are in my opinion they are specialized in uh, in Dansong and it's worth trying of the teas that we have tried so far, we had also a sample, uh, so we tried uh, one, two, three, four teas. My personal suggestion would be the um, uh, honeysuckle, so Yashishan Dakshit from winter. It cost uh, is one of the the most affordable teas they have, and is really really a good Yashishan. If you have enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to. <laughs> to give us a thumbs up <laughs> and uh, go ahead subscribe our channel if you haven't done it yet and more video like this will come your way very soon thank you guys bye 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 bye